Welcome to an episode of InRange. I'm here with something very exciting. It is to me, and it should be to anyone that's an InRange viewer. This is the Bond Arms Lever Gun. Uh, official name still forthcoming. Uh, this was seen briefly at SHOT Show, and you may have seen some videos about it there already. But today in this video, we get the opportunity, and I'm very thankful for that opportunity, to get deep dive information on this with one of the lead engineers. We're going to take this thing apart, show you a lot about how it works, and talk about a lot of the philosophy about why this was designed the way it was. Uh, one of the things I do want to mention to the audience, and we've seen this when we see any modernized lever gun, is that this was not made or designed in the intention of dealing with gun bans. This might very well achieve something that would be useful to people in restrictive areas, but this was designed, and I know this from talking to the lead, one of the lead engineers, this was designed because they love lever guns. He loves lever guns, and he wanted to see a truly modern lever gun, and I can vouch for this being a truly modern lever gun. What I want to speak to that, for example, is first of all, the throw of the action. It's really quite short and quite easy to cycle this. As you may have seen in other videos here on, on InRange, when I'm running lever guns at Desert Brutality or something like that, the ease of throw and the length of throw is what lends itself to the speed of fire and the ability to stay on target. And that's something you need in a lever gun and this thing brings it to the table. So why don't we go ahead and put this down here, get over with one of the lead engineers, take it apart and get a deeper dive on what makes this thing truly unique. All right, so we have one of the lead engineers here and he's gonna guide us through the design principles of the Bond Arms lever gun. Okay, thank you, Carl. So, you know, let's for a moment say that we've got a clean piece of paper and we wanna design a modern lever gun. Okay, well, what do we want? You know, maybe a rotating bolt for precision and strength. You know, you're going to want modern cartridges, which likely means a box magazine. You're going to want to utilize modern materials, be that polymer, aluminum, or high-strength steels, or other coatings. And, uh, you know, maybe make it user-configurable or modular. Well, if you step back, all of that overlaps with the last 60 years of AR development. And so what we want to do is kind of stand on the shoulders of that to create our new lever gun. Well, what does that mean? Okay, well, let's start with the three things you need to change calibers. Barrel, bolt, and magazine. All that is completely AR compatible. On top of that, we've got compatibility with uppers and handguards. But I'm going to draw the distinction between compatible and optimized. Even though we can use those, we also have an opportunity to potentially optimize it for this application. For example, um, you know, we could use a standard AR barrel, but we don't need a gas port. We don't need all the journal features. When it comes to uppers and handguards, we have an opportunity to potentially pull about a half inch of height out and push the optics even lower. So the idea of a modern lever gun has been played with a bit. Uh, you know, Carl's already mentioned that people have taken historic guns and just said, what can we do with our current action? Okay, well, you know, make it tactical, you paint it black, you thread the muzzle, and then you potentially do a new handguard or something to allow mounting of accessories. That makes a lot of sense when you're fixed with a given action, but what happens if you take a fresh look on that? So what we did is uh, attack it in a few different ways. The most important is the action itself, which is if you watch closely, the bolt moves very slowly at the beginning of the lever stroke, and that's to have lots of leverage for primary extraction. But once you unlock, it moves very quickly and very efficiently. Now on the return stroke, you actually utilize a different part of the cam path and you also get to tune that for different purposes, in which case the most critical one is stripping out of the magazine. So in addition to the lever throw, we look closely at the user interfaces and the safeties. So user interface wise, ironically, it's not even on this gun. This was a show gun that has been converted for testing and engineering purposes, but there is a mag release rearward, so it's in a more natural position. We've also got an out of battery safety um, to prevent issues along those lines, whether that's an out of battery problem or just a dead trigger as you return the lever. We've got a cross bolt safety. On top of that, 
we looked really hard at the stock. The stock is 870 compatible, and what you'll notice, again, being kind of an engineering gun, there's an, uh, a color mismatch between the mechanical lever and the lever loop. That is so you can actually have modular levers, whether that's about personal preference of big loop or small loop, or allowing you to match whatever particular stock you have. Here's a Magpul. At the show, we also had Hogue. You know, you could potentially put wooden furniture on this if you want to. Okay, so why don't you walk us through the basic field strip, but then above and beyond that, the actual internals of this unique action. Sounds good, Carl. So I'm going to start out by uh, pushing the standard AR takedown pin there in the back. And as you can see inside here, we've got the lower having to work with the upper, of course, because it generates motion of the bolt carrier, unlike a normal AR. So I'm going to slide back, and it's actually going to get to a certain point and release itself. Then I'm going to work on the front takedown pin. And this one's kind of tough, but I think we should be able to pop it right off. There we go. All right, so for the moment, I'm going to set aside the lower and we'll take a look at the upper. So one of the things we've been talking about is the difference between compatible and optimized. This is built from completely standard AR parts, upper, handguard, and even the barrel has just got a blocked gas port. What we have here is a plug where you'd normally have your charging handle. On this sample, it is an accessory that uses an Allen wrench to take it out, but that's less than ideal for a couple reasons. One is I needed to use a tool for field uh, strip and also I got a part I can lose. When we have our dedicated ones, more likely than not, that plug will just be a simple pivot that's held in by the lower. Um, it's something, it's not common, but it's, it, there are a few different side charger ARs that work that way. But once that's opened up, bull carrier just comes right out. Now this, uh, what is unique here is the carrier itself and the firing pin because of the way it works with the linkage but the cotter pin, the bolt, and the cam pin are all completely standard. So if I was looking to change calibers, I'd do it right here. The other thing is, even if I hadn't popped that plug out, when the plug is in place, if I had a whole nother lower upper, I could just toss that right on and be back in the game. Okay, so we've talked about the bolt carrier. We'll come back to the lower in a minute. But I want to use this opportunity to just talk about some of the different things you can do with the upper assembly. Um, so, you know, you can have something that's forged versus billet, of course. Uh, this is a real slick side, um, slab side, with no, you know, clearly we've got no forward assist on either. But, you know, to be determined whether or not you or, or what's a factory offering as far as whether or not you want injection port cover. I know in range is big on mud tests. So moving forward, you know, I think of this as more of really your sporter or lean. You know, we've got a lean upper. We've got a real low profile handguard that's shorter. Both have got pencil barrels. Um, then over here, we've just got you know simple uh, thread protector versus a muzzle device, in this case, kind of a basic comp. Um, what you also notice here is that this is in a large ejection port. And that's because we have hopes of you know, doing a range of calibers on this platform. And the last thing I want to mention is my favorite part about this handguard is We've talked a couple times now about the potential of pushing, without a gas system, pushing optics lower. This is currently at the three o'clock position. This is actually the height that we could have at 12 o'clock. And you can see truly how low that is. That's as, and this handguard represents the smallest the barrel nut can be, and also the smallest that results in an in-spec surface for M-lock interface. All right, so why don't you walk us through the reassembly. You've done the field strip, you've given us a deep dive on the bulk air group. What's it like to put back together? Sounds good. All right, so we're gonna switch from the kind of sporter to more tactical upper on that front. So first things first, I just have to make sure that this upper does in fact fit properly. So I like to just kind of pop it in and pop the pins in. Good to go on that front. Now I'm gonna open it up and work on the bolt carrier. So it comes back in and we're going to stop at the same position that we were at when we did the field stripping and take it apart. Right now these toggles are a split design. 
Um, that was kind of done looking at manufacturability. There's potential of going back to actually an earlier design that was a uniform version, um, which just helps a little bit with getting this back together smoothly. So, kind of line these up, slip right in. As soon as I feel the bolt carrier moving, uh, it means I'm in the right spot. Now, um, like other things with guns, if you have to force it, it probably is not right. So I'm just going to find the right spot to let this thing pass over center. And as soon as it does, just close it up. And you don't need the plug. That's if you want. The, the plug is optional. And again, ones that will come um, from the factory will have a different solution. This would just be for folks who are trying to build their own. So that's all it takes to go from one upper to another. That's right. As well as the fact changing calibers, I could swap out complete uppers, or like we talked about, you saw how to take out the bolt carrier and you get at the bolt just like you would um, a normal uh, AR-15. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, as you can see, I'm very excited about this concept. I have long wanted to see a truly modern lever gun come to the market. And where this is going, based on the things you've even already seen here on InRange, this feels very much to be going in that direction. Of course, this is a prototype. It's not in production yet, and we really haven't even fired it yet. So we're going to go ahead and take this out to the range and put some rounds through it and see how it works. I don't know what to say on the clock, but with some live fire. And we're going to do a different video for you showing you that because really the proof is there, right? It's one thing to cycle this here in a room. It's another thing to actually put a magazine in it and put rounds on target. So that's the next step in this. But what I do want to say is I'm very thankful for Bond Arms to bringing me the opportunity to bring to you not only this video, but some live fire and another video. And we have another piece of content about the history and design principles and inspiration for this. So stay tuned for that as well. And hopefully we're going to be able to watch this mature into a truly interesting production made modern lever gun and that's where i hope this goes right now we're at the beginning of this and this shows a lot of promise and i'm very excited about it and i'm very thankful for bond for bringing this to the table hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this kind of content this is the kind of stuff i live to bring to in range these deep dives insider looks and uh, interesting mechanical designs that have still merit today. This is exactly the kind of mesh of history and modernity that really pushes my buttons and hopefully yours as well. Uh, I also got to remind you, InRange is completely no sponsorship channel. This is not sponsored by Bond Arms. They didn't pay me to do this video. In fact, it was a privilege for me to do it. I was excited to do it, but this is completely uh, not sponsored content. It's you, the viewer, that keep InRange alive via Patreon and Utreon or just sharing and liking the content. Thanks for watching.